Hey guys, welcome to the long-awaited elevator tutorial. Uh, I just want to showcase my new updated system. You were able to edit the max players and the countdown time for each elevator uh, or queue system you want, or, or each elevator model. So first of all, I will showcase how you can't obviously join when there is <coughs> a full elevator. Here we have two players, and obviously two players can join. Here we have a countdown of 20. And here with a final countdown of 8. Uh, once this countdown, or countdown of 10, sorry, once this whole countdown is over, both, tele both players should be teleported successfully. <clears throat> and there we go. They're both in the same place so he will head over to studio and i will show you i like this all right now that we are in studio i will show you guys how to set up this model i will leave a free model in the description just so it is easy for you guys and if you guys don't really care about the scripting of it but after i showcase how to use it i will go into the the scripts and showcase how it works and this isn't as well written as i would want it to be but it gets the job done so with each model we have you know the elevator itself an enter part and an elevator spawn part these two are critical and the fact that each model has a different name so you can go to the attributes down here and you can edit countdown and max players. Just make sure there's also an elevator tag within each model. For example, we have two. And if you do not input a max players or a countdown attribute, it'll default to, I believe, eight and 30. Or you can set that up later if you go within the Q module. So that is basically the setup you need for the elevator models. Then we have a leave queue event that you put in duplicated storage. We have a handler folder and a modules folder. Elevator handle queue model, queue module, and then a UI for the leave button. And you can always edit this how you want. And lastly, we need a elevator client. Okay. <clears throat> With all these, you still do need a place to teleport. So to create that, you can go to the view tab and find asset manager. You go to asset, asset manager, you'll come up with this. You want to go to place, you can right click and add new place. And here you can edit that place, you know, make it a map, make whatever you'd like the players to be teleported to. Once you have that, you just want to copy the ID of the place to the clipboard. And you can add that into here if you want it to be the same. <clears throat> the same, uh, what's it called? Same place for each queue. Or uh, you can, let me actually add this right here. <clears throat> okay, so you have a default place ID here. I'll just put this as default. So you can go within the elevator again and attributes and just add an attribute place ID. It's going to be a number. And you can copy that in here. Control V to copy. Okay, so let me attempt to explain my scripts and bear with me here. Um, let's start with the module first. So first, obviously, we're defining some variables. We're going to define the teleport server. This is how you teleport the players to the, you know, quote unquote map or place you want them to be teleported to. I have a default max and a default countdown just so it's, uh, you know, there's one set up just in case there isn't a countdown specified. We have a players in queue table. This will hold 
every single player that is currently in a queue. And we have a, this is actually how they do. <clears throat> okay. So this is, this uses some sort of uh, object or input. So we have to set up a queue. So if we go back to the server script, we have systems. And this is where you set up each system. There are four different variables that can be passed through this setup function. First, we have the elevator model, which would be this in the workspace. We have the place ID, the max players, and the countdown number. This is all that is you know, sent through this little function and its parameters. This is just some object oriented programming. We have a self.name. This just uh, creates a variable that can be asked, accessed outside of this uh, module script. And it is set to the elevator name. This is just so we can identify which, uh, this helps with identifying which um, elevator the per, 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 the elevator the player is currently in. We have a bunch of private variables that are only, you know, for this function. So we have the place ID, which is gotten from this parameter. The elevator model, again, from this parameter. The elevator and spawn and surface UI. So this is, again, going back to how we require or we need these three. These three have to be within this model or else this script won't work. And that's what you can see is being defined right here. Max players again is found here or here. Countdown is found here or here. Player count is going to be the current players that are within a said elevator at a time. A countdown thread, this is a this is just declaring a function that can be used. I mean a variable that'll be used later, which is a thread variable. And busy means if it a um what's it called? If an elevator is currently teleporting. So I'm just gonna skip ahead to add time. Okay. <clears throat> These are two methods that are pretty much the core of how this um Q system works. So as we see in this for loop, we use the collection service to grab all the models that are tagged as elevator. So that's why this tag is so important. So it finds the elevator model and it sets it up with the queue model. And we can add that to a table that holds all the elevators that are currently set up. So now, we have a enter part. So whenever this part is touched, so basically when a player wants to enter an elevator, we have to first get that player. And that is done by getting it from the character. And usually the hit is going to be like, I don't know, a humanoid report or a torso or an arm. And this function just gives us the player value of that type player. So that if the player exists, I am going to add a player to the um to the queue <laughs> sorry struggling to find the words so then this function fires so we fire it with the player player <clears throat> so if the player and the player is not currently in a queue and the player count of that of this current elevator is underneath the max players and it's not busy teleporting then you want to find the humanoid group part. This is how we're going to teleport the player into the queue. So if that exists, we're going to add the player to the table of all players in queue. We're going to add the player count to, we're going to add one to the player count, just so it updates. We're going to set an attribute to the player to tell us which elevator they are currently in. We'll set that as current elevator. And the C frame is going to be the elevator spawn C frame. So here we're going to update the count. Let's go over to this. So this basically just updates this UI right here. These are players. It's going to update that <clears throat> to the current player count, which we just updated, and the max players. This is just concatenation to combine it all together. Uh, let me just make it easier. Here we go. And then we want to start the countdown. So if there is no countdown thread currently going, we're going to spawn a thread. This basically means that this will all run without 
causing it to stop anything else from running. Countdown not equals. So when we spawn a task, or if this is going to spawn a thread and return a thread value, so this is going to be stored as a thread. So this starts the countdown, obviously. <clears throat> Once this countdown is over, we're going to make a busy teleporting. We're going to keep. We're going to set the UI text to teleporting, which is this UI and waiting. This just creates a server that all the players within the queue will be teleported to just so they aren't teleported to, you know, different servers. Then we have to loop through each player that is currently in the queue, in a queue. Um, I'm going to move this down here, actually. We're going to loop through each player in the queue. <clears throat> and we're going to first hide their leave button just because we don't want them to leave. And sorry to jump around here, but I feel like this is the best way for me to explain it. Uh, in the elevator client, we have the leave button from an event that I spoke about earlier. So on that client event, if the command is hide and it's currently visible, it'll hide it. It's pretty much just hiding the button. Um, we're going to run this in a protected call just in case it throws an error. We don't want to stop this whole, <clears throat> this whole thread from running. We're going to teleport. Teleport async, we're going to teleport to the place ID that was specified. We're going to teleport the player, current player, and with the uh, reserved access code. And this if statement, just make sure that it only teleports the players that are in the current elevator uh, that is doing teleporting, if that makes any sense. And if for some reason the player is unable to be teleported, we just want to reset that. Then we have a little cleanup section where we you know, reset all these values back to what they were these and these and the player count obviously zero and it's no longer busy teleporting <clears throat> so that's what basically this add player function goes and one more thing it returns true if it successfully uh was teleported within and if the player actually joins in then it shows the um leave button because we don't want to just fire the leave button whenever the player is touched because if a player happens to you know gl some glitch happens this is just a measure to stop any errors from happening or any glitches okay so now we want the leave function obviously so you enter it now we want to leave it <clears throat> so with the leave button which is defined up here we just want to fire the server this is all we have to do on the client side so on the server event obviously we get the player so we want to find the current elevator the player is in so if that exists we're going to go through all these setup elevators and if the setup elevator name, which is what we defined up here, is equal to the current elevator, meaning the player, the player's current elevator, and we want to find the setup elevators, uh, the setup elevator like equivalent, if that makes any sense. We want to find which elevator it is, basically. Yeah, we want to find the elevator that the current player, the player is currently in. We want to remove the player then. Then we fire, remove player, and we hide the button, obviously, because we don't have to leave if we're already left. <clears throat> so we have this remove player function. Again, we get the player. So if player exists and the player is currently in a queue, we will reset the player. We will delete the attribute of the current elevator, so there is no current elevator the player is in. Uh, we will remove the player from the players in queue fun uh, table. It will subtract the player count by one of the current elevator. And then we have this one if statement. So if the player count goes to zero, we have to stop the countdown, obviously, because you know you don't want to think to keep going if there's no player in it. So this is where we find this is where we use the stored uh, thread. So if the thread exists, which I hope it does, <laughs> we go to the surface UI and we reset it to waiting point point zero or rating. I don't know what I had, point zero four. <laughs> we make the text awaiting, and then we cancel the thread. So this basically stops us in its tracks. So wherever it is, it just stops. Whatever loop, it, I mean, whatever uh, iteration is currently on, it'll just stop there. And then obviously we have to delete the thread because there's no longer a thread. <clears throat> um, that's it. That is pretty much how I created this system. If you have any questions um i'll leave my i'll leave a discord server below just yes and join that i uh, i'm sort of active and you guys can ask your questions there i hope this helped a little bit um 
I don't think I did the best job explaining that. You know, it's not bad, but uh, I will leave a free model in the description that contains all this stuff and the scripts and the other scripts that I added, edited in the video. Otherwise, I hope you guys found this useful, and I'm sorry this took so long to make. Uh, thanks, guys.